Welcome to those of you watching third round coverage of the Travelers Championship from TPC River Highlands in Cromwell, Connecticut. A little bit of a moving and shaking afternoon there in Cromwell. Dustin Johnson makes a move, but we've got a tie atop the leaderboard with Bubba Watson, the three-time Travelers Champ. As we take a look at that leaderboard, Kramer Hickok tied with Bubba Watson there at 10 under par. Hickok looking for his first career PJ Tour victory in his 68th start. Uh, he's looking to pop the bottle on a massive bottle of wine. He and Sam Burns are buddies. Sam Burns got to pop the bottle earlier this year when he won. Now Kramer Hickok looking to do the same. But Bubba Watson looking to win this event for the fourth time in his career. Looking for his first PJ Tour victory since 2018 when he won the Travelers Championship. Get some instant analysis. Welcome in Sportsline Data Scientist and host of the First Cut Podcast. We're gaming the year of the comeback storylines continue. Three-time Travelers champ Bubba Watson tied for the lead with Kramer Hickok. Watson had the wild moment on Friday teeing off at number two. Driver had snapped off the shaft, went on to birdie the hole. Last time he won an event on tour was the Travelers in 2018. Rick, what is it about TPC River Highlands that suits Bubba's game? Yeah, first off, I wish I could snap the head off my driver, still find the fairway and make birdie from there. That would certainly be nice. Bubba Watson capable of that. And uh, we know Bubba is probably the ultimate feel golfer on the PGA Tour. I think Bryson DeChambeau is the complete opposite. Bryson wants to turn everything into an equation. He wants to be a robot, while Bubba Watson relies more on the artist inside of him and the feel in his game. And TPC River Highlands offers him an opportunity to be really creative. You know, this is a course that is not overly long. In fact, it's one of the shorter courses that we have on the PGA Tour, but you have to be exact and you have to be pre precise with your driver and the ability to work the ball in multiple directions is a huge benefit. And that's exactly what Bubba Watson can do. You throw in the three victories, Hakeem, so you know you've got a pro Bubba Watson crowd behind him each year that he walks out onto TPC River Highlands and it's just a great place with a lot of good memories and he's, he's able to continue it and keep it rolling seemingly from year to year. You mentioned Bryson DeChambeau. He's uh, in the top 10 right now at seven under par, but I want to focus on former world number one and second round leader Jason Day, also looking for his 13th PGA Tour victory and first since 2018. You had him on the First Cut podcast, which was a great listen. Uh, if you haven't listened, to go back and listen to it. Uh, you certainly inspired him, Rick, talking him up, and he looks <laughs> to get back on track after battling multiple injuries. He bogeyed 18 to fall one shot back of the lead. What have you seen from him through three rounds, and is he any closer to looking like the Jason Day of old? Yeah, the Jason Day of old is a really good version of Jason Day. I mean, number one player in the world for 51 weeks, a ton of wins in a short period of time. And even just the, the eye test for Jason Day right now isn't great. He's always walking around there very gingerly. You saw him take a hack on 18 off the tee and immediately kind of reach for the lower back, something that always ails him. But the metrics are looking better for Jason Day. You know, he talked a lot uh, when we chatted with him earlier in the week about confidence. And confidence does not go from zero to 100 Hakeem it's these little wins all the way up the scale you know you have one good hole then you have one good round then you put two rounds together and you continue to have a lot of good sessions and then a lot of great sessions and so you are back in contention you know we we talked about it 51 weeks atop the world rankings uh, so far he does not want that to be his final number 12 PGA Tour victories he does not want that to be his final number and he's gonna have a chance on Sunday to add to that resume but the back's gonna have to hold up he's gonna have to continue to hit that three wood really well off the tee there's a couple of spots that he can unleash that at TPC River Highlands and he's got to play like the Jason Day of old and play confidently if he wants to hoist a trophy on Sunday evening certainly a guy to root for going into Sunday meantime defending Travelers champ and world number two Dustin Johnson making a move on moving day up some 50 spots on the leaderboard yeah. carding a 565 he was two under coming into the day Rick what clicked for DJ on Saturday Seemingly everything, you know, he is gaining strokes in every strokes gained category. That's across the board, off the tee, approach around the green and putty. It means it's a well-rounded week for Dustin Johnson, and that's what you want to see because we have not seen a lot of those weeks from DJ in the last couple of months. And I think he got uh, really lucky after posting a, a great low round of the day on Saturday morning because the wind started to kick up, the course got more firm, more fast, and you didn't see really anybody in the PM wave extend. 
So now we've got 16 golfers within three shots of the lead, one of them being Dustin Johnson trying to go back to back, and it's starting to look like he has put the weapons back in his bag, the wedge game, the driver, the things that made him the number one player in the world before John Rahm took it away from him last week. So uh, all things trending in a positive for a direction for DJ. He's probably going to have to shoot something really low on Sunday if he wants to go back to back. But if anybody can do it, it's it's Dustin Johnson. Well, he's in the mix, and there's certainly many uh, faces that are familiar to us in the mix atop the leaderboard. You got guys like Russell Henley, who was in the mix at the U.S. Open last week, as well as Harris English, who snuck in with a, a third place finish at the U.S. Open when all was yeah. said and done. Like, wow, how'd he get up there? But he was there, and here he is again this week, right there in the mix. So your pick to win. Who do you like to win the Travelers Championship after three rounds? I'm going to go with Bubba Watson. I think what we saw on the final two holes on Saturday tell a big story. Bubba Watson made a birdie on 17. He made a par on 18, probably should have made that birdie putt. And then Kramer Hickok, the 331st ranked player in the world, saw his name atop the leaderboard uh, and immediately bogeyed both 17 and 18. And, and there's not a lot of winning pedigree near the top of the leaderboard. How creative you are is, is critically important around TPC River Highlands. Bubba Watson, one of the most creative players that we have on tour he's in the pole position and he is going for his fourth career victory at tpc river highlands i think he gets it done on sunday well he is the favorite going into sunday's final round at plus 300 and rick gaiman is pegging him to win his fourth travelers championship rick joining us here on cbs sports hq to break down round three of the travelers championship and for more awesome golf content join rick gaiman and his crew on the first cut podcast uh, they just interviewed jason day and max homa uh, two great listens there to interview uh, you get tournament previews as well including dfs picks and analysis you also get round by round reaction to each pga tour event the first cut podcast download and subscribe today do you want a sports network that delivers everything that matters about the game? The highlights, the picks, the instant analysis, no yelling, no fake debates, no politics. Hit the subscribe button and never miss a moment.